Under Plexus LE Manager, let's access Model, Create New Model, select the Groundwater Module and the 2D system. We are proceeding with a steady state analysis and after defining this, just type the model name, click OK, and Plexus 2D LE will open up for us. The first step in this tutorial is the enter of geometry. We are going to use the import from ASCII file. Look on, click on Browse and we have already the example for this case in shape file. We'll click on Next and all these shapes are referring to one soil polygon. We can view the selection before important to make sure that uh, it's properly imported and then click on imported selected objects. We can see that we have nine objects imported. We'll click OK and this will be the uh, final view. The next step is we can see through regions under geometry dialog the name of each of the regions and we can click on the name and just reassign a new name. In this case we are reassigning with the soil material name because it will make things easier later for material assignation to each of these uh, regions, soil polygons. Okay, so after defining all the names we'll click OK, the regions will be renamed and we can now go under Material Manager and create under New a new material type. In this case, the first one will be the earth fill and we are considering an unsaturated material. We need uh, to first click on the volumetric water content and adjust the saturated volumetric water content and also include the soil water characteristic curve. In this case, we are using Fred Lang and Shing fit using a data source uh, based on the lab data and when we select this we need to click on data and paste the points referring to the lab results. We can now see when applying the fit the correlation with the theoretical method. Click OK and now we need to adjust the hydraulic conductivity. So we have for this tutorial a certain constant uh, saturated hydraulic conductivity and we need to define the unsaturated, in this case using modified Campbell estimation. The p-value is based on a Sandy Lowen and the uh, option referring to the k-minimum is set based on the tutorial. The next material that we're going to include is the filter sand and this one is a saturated material. When handling a saturated case, we don't need, of course, the unsaturated properties. So just the saturated volumetric content and the saturated hydraulic conductivity as well. Now we just need to include uh, the next materials in the, in the example based on the information we have available in the tutorial.
We have finally adjusted the last uh, material type referring to bedrock and we can click OK and have all the materials created in our library. The next step is go under geometry stage settings and apply uh, the material type to each of the regions. So as we mapped early the region name, it's easier for us to use this dialog in order to include the material Pulbert with same uh, region name. And the bedrock referring to the bottom layer, click OK, and now we can see the material assigned in the model along with the materials legend including uh, the saturated and saturated properties. Uh, under boundary, boundary conditions, we'll define two different boundary conditions in the model the upstream boundary condition and the downstream head boundary condition. So uh, in this dialog, we can type the name of each of them and also include in the details what is the type of boundary. In this case, the upstream is a head with 130 and the downstream is also a head of 92 meters. We can click OK and directly on the selecting line segments, we can just select the lines of the model and applying the boundaries directly to a line uh, or to a point, for example. So we could use the boundary uh, dialog, model boundary, or we can do as, as this case by using the mouse and selecting the, the lines in the model and making sure that they are properly assigned. With right click, we can see some of the boundary conditions available. All set. Now on the output, we include the flow sections because we want to collect uh, other, under a certain line uh, the flow uh, value. And in this case, you can see flux one included. Mesh settings, we can adjust the maximum edge length on region boundaries to 2.5. Click on Generate, and this would be the final mesh for the tutorial uh, in place. We can now return to Model and include the slope stability. Click OK, and you'll see that now uh, the Model uh, slope stability will be included. We'll first run the groundwater analysis. We can see here in the Plex is LE grounded solver processing. It's completed. We can see in the message. Click on exit. And we'll be able to see uh, some of the outputs. So here is the result in terms of uh, pore pressure. We can also under plot, counter, counter settings, select the variable, in this case the pressure head, and also see the results regarding uh, this evaluation. So returning to the input part, we can now switch to slope stability and by doing this we can see that the water table uh, is located in the model based on the groundwater analysis. For the slope stability we have to adjust the model settings, so I'm using the entry and exit search method, keeping the GLIAC as calculation and the conversions, I'm changing the minimum slide surface depth to 0 0.5. Click OK. And now we need to adjust the material properties as the fold it will appear as more coulomb. But in the case, for example, of the earth field, we can select here unsaturated Fredland. Click OK. And adjust some of the strength parameters based on the tables available in our tutorial. The soil water characteristic curve, we can use the feeding soil parameter as one. And when we click on properties and data, you see that it's linked to the information from the groundwater module. We can reapply and make sure that the soil water is actually capturing the behavior that we're looking for. OK. OK. And now we're going to adjust uh, the other uh, material types. Uh, by updating the strength parameters and the unit weight. 
and in some cases here adjusting also the constitutive model related to this material. Now that all materials were adjusted, we can now go on their slips, is the slope limits to define the, the limits of the slope searching area. So we changed the x coordinates and we can see the arrows that were adjusted. Uh, return to the entry and exit dialog. And here we can define the entry range uh, by including the coordinates also available in the tutorial defining the increments to them, and also the exit range would be a range, not a point, and maintaining also the increments in S10. The radius, uh, we are also switching to 10, click OK, and we can see the red line applied defining the search uh, area. We can now click on Run, Analyze, save the model, and we have the plexus at least slope stability solver available for us, calculating uh, the forces and moments regarding the factor of safety. We can now visualize the results by clicking on visualize results. And then uh, the critical uh, sliding my ass is, is, is presented in the output. Uh, we can click on show slices to see some of these slices in the model and by double clicking also evaluate for example the influence of metric suction because we are using unsaturated models uh, for pressures as well and here on graphs slice data we can map for example the combination of metric suction and pore water pressure along the critical sliding mass as we can see the plotting or also select some other variables uh, as well. So for example, the base shear resistance and the base shear resistance mobilized, uh, capturing some of the main behaviors along the failure mass.